Rangers really don't get a lot of love, but I think they have potential, even if some of their features are less than perfect. And one of the ideas that I really love about Rangers is that despite their name, Rangers are more of a companion class than a ranged class. Sure, not every subclass goes with this idea, but my favorite ones like Drake Warden and Swarm Ranger do. So what if we took that idea and took it in a completely different direction? And instead of an animal companion to fight alongside you, we turn your weapon into your companion. Well hey, and welcome back to the Game Master's Domain, where I like to make weird homebrew stuff. And today we are doing exactly that, taking the ranger's best concept, that of companions, and turning it on its head with the Weapon Meister Ranger. As always, if you want, you can get this pack on my Patreon. Just $3 a month gets you pretty much everything that I've ever made. Or if you want to help me in other ways, you can subscribe, like the video, or better yet, leave a comment. The algorithm really likes comments. Now let's get to the fun part, figuring out how to pretty much give you a free sentient weapon as a subclass feature. A sound soul dwells within a sound mind and a sound body. As I'm sure you guys know, I love Soul Eater, and while I was doing research for the Armament race and re-watching Soul Eater for the fifth time, why am I like this, I really started wanting to make a subclass out of it, and I thought that having a super unique companion would be a fun idea for that. Kind of giving you an NPC ally that you can talk to, but also not have to worry about food or lodging, since the last time I checked, swords don't need food. But before we get into the specifics, let's take a quick look at what a Weapon Meister actually is in the world of Soul Eater. Meisters are one half of a pair, the wielder of a demon weapon, which is someone that can turn into a powerful magical weapon. Since without someone who knows how to properly wield their weapon form, demon weapons are pretty limited in what they can do. Guns don't just go firing off on their own very often after all. But there's more to it than just a skillful user since some weapons are actually really skilled in hand-to-hand -hand and using their ability to partially transform to fight without one. Sure, they might be strong on their own, but they're never going to reach their full potential that way. Like a wizard without fireball. Since when a demon weapon is paired with a weapon meister, both the human and the weapon are able to channel their souls into attacks. This is what they call their soul wavelength, the frequency of their soul. And I'm not going to go into exactly how that works, since we really don't need to know that for this, but just know that they use their souls for combat, and by pushing that wavelength through their weapons, it gets stronger. And usually neither weapon nor Meister can do this without the other one. Usually. There are some characters like Blackstar and Dr. Stein that can use their soul wavelength without a weapon, but it's still a fairly rare ability. By using this technique and channeling their soul wavelength through their weapons, they get a bunch of different abilities, including one called Soul Resonance, which we'll get into later. For now, let's move on to the very first thing, which is something I somehow always forget about when I'm making a ranger subclass, the fact that they have their own subclass spells. But being half casters, they only get one per spell level. Now just like with normal ranger, you don't have to pick melee or ranged with this subclass, but most of the demon weapons in Soul Eater are, in fact, melee weapons of some sort. So I kind of focused on that. Besides, the base ranger spells give you plenty of ranged options anyway. Okay, let's go down the list real quick, since honestly, this is probably my least favorite part of any of these videos, just listing off spells. So right away, when you take the subclass, you get the first level spell, Searing Smite. Enhance ability is to make up for any lacking stats for a second level spell. And after that, you get both Shadow of Moil and Spirit Shroud for a little bit of soul projection, something seen a few times in the show. And your last spell is Far Step, because... Why did I put Far Step here? W one sec. Steel Wind Strike's already on the Ranger list, and... Yeah, nothing else really fits here, so... I guess you get a little bit of enhanced movement. Seems fitting for beefing yourself up with soul energy, I guess. Okay, now we can move on to the fun part, giving you a sentient weapon as a partner, and not making it a busted magic item that just breaks everything. To do this, I had to borrow a little bit from the Hexblade Warlock, 
while also keeping in mind that this is going to be a living and thinking weapon, a character in the party. But with a quick skim through Warlock and the homebrew rules for making sentient weapons, some of which you'll see I didn't add here, but you can feel free to add those later if you want, we get the first feature, your weapon companion. Now I don't want to throw a book at you, so I'm going to give you the abridged version of this feature since it takes up like half a page. So with this, whenever you summon your weapon companion, it costs one action, and you get to pick their form. It could be a sword, a scythe, a hammer, a quarterstaff, really anything you want. But no matter the form, you are always proficient with it. So sure, go ahead and pull out a trigun cross and start shooting people, you're still going to know how to use it. It also always counts as being magical for anything that's resistant to non-magical damage, in case that comes up. On top of that, whenever you attune to a magical weapon, you can have your demon weapon take on that attuned magic weapon's properties. But if for some reason you have more than one attuned to yourself, you can't stack them. But you could resummon your weapon as an action and change which weapon it shows the properties of. Which does kind of make me think of Blackstar and Tsubaki, even though she changes in the middle of an attack sometimes, but still, this could be pretty useful. Now the main part that I borrowed from Warlock is being able to use your Wisdom modifier for attack and damage rolls, so if you really don't want to split your stats up, you can just focus on Wisdom and maybe pick up some more feats or focus on Constitution. As for the whole sentience part, there's a section for homebrew on that, but this is kind of the gutted version of what you'll find on most sentient weapons, since a lot of the features here depend on you. For instance, your demon weapon shares your alignment, and it also has its own soft stats, a 12, 14, and 16 that you can put wherever you want. So if you want your sword to have really high charisma, you can actually have your sword just do all the talking for you. Literally. The personality is also up to you, but honestly, if you want some more chaos, you can just have your DM do it and have clashing personalities, it's not a big deal. Your weapon also has their own senses, so they could possibly see something you don't and point it out to you, or chastise you for not noticing. It kind of makes you feel more like a team and not just a weapon and the user. Which is the point, you want your companion to be part of the team and not just something there to deal damage. But as per usual, rangers get two features when they take their subclass, and I wanted to have something that goes hand in hand with the demon weapons of Soul Eater. So what better than the standard power set of the series, the Soul Wavelength. For this feature, I really thought we should put the half-casting nature of the rangers to use, letting you use your spell slots without actually having to cast any of your ranger spells. So think like Paladin Smites. Except instead of just adding more damage with each level, there are different effects depending on which level spell slot you used. Which if I did right, should appear now. Obviously since these are locked behind different levels of spell slots, you're not going to be able to use all of them right away. But you do get one right when you take the subclass, and they'll trickle in as you go. Most of these in some way do damage but also come with different effects, like an AoE, stunning, or even upping your crit rate. But on top of this, something you don't have to spend a spell slot for, is once per turn, you get to add an extra d6 of force damage whenever you're hitting one of your favorite enemies or favorite foes with your best friend. And believe it or not, we still have more to go, because those first two features took up the entire first page of the PDF and the first four pages of this script. And the last three didn't even take up half a page, and are only two pages of the script, so this next part's gonna go pretty damn fast. But yeah, now we can move on to the rest of the subclass. And I wanted to make sure that your soul wavelength actually got used, since as with anything that has a low number of spell slots, it can really easily fall into the too good to use pit, and I wanted to have that not happen here. So to encourage you to not only get on the front lines and get smacked around, but also to use your spell slots, your next feature is Soul Attunement, perfectly matching your soul and your weapon's soul to create a stronger bond between you. This gives you some temporary HP whenever you use your soul wavelength, 1d8 per level of the spell slot used. So it could be just 1d8, or you could suddenly get a massive 45 temp HP shield when using higher level spell slots which could really come in clutch if your healer is busy or down on the count. 
On top of that, as long as you're making weapon attacks with your friend, you also get to make an additional weapon attack as a bonus action. So this should help you keep up with the fighter, as long as you're not using your bonus action for something else every turn. See how much faster this is? So fast that we're already moving on to the next big thing in Soul Eater, Soul Resonance. This bounces your soul wavelength through your weapon and back to you multiple times, increasing its abilities both offensively and defensively. Mostly it's more offensively in the show, but Dr. Stein does use it to protect himself from other wavelengths that could hurt him by matching his own to the attackers. What it does in practice here, though, is you take the highest stat from your weapon, so whichever one you put a plus three in, and you get to add that number to your saving throws against any spells or magical effects. But you also get to add that number to the damage of attacks you make with your weapon companion, so offensive and defensive. So this helps protect you from incoming attacks, and lets you stack even more damage up, so that way you won't fall behind even if you happen to blast through all your spell slots like you're a warlock. There's always one ability that ends up being a brick wall for me when it comes to making these subclasses, and more often than not, it's the final one, since this is kinda where balance goes to die. These abilities are usually broken and make you an untouchable god, or are worthless and unusable. Usually. There are some that are in the middle, but it's a fine line. And honestly, I'd rather be on the broken side than the unusable side. Things can always be scaled up to fight a stronger party, but it's harder to scale them down and still be fun. That said, I do still try to keep things as balanced as I can, but sometimes it's just not going to happen. So, for your final ability, Soul Hunter, I wanted to give you a way to regain spell slots. Not in mass, but a few of them. So, simply put, whenever you kill something or you drop its HP to zero, you can use your reaction and regain a spell slot of third level or lower, but you can only do it a few times per day up to your proficiency bonus. This was really the only thing I could think of for how to incorporate the soul eating in Soul Eater, but unfortunately I wasn't able to add any buff or reward for eating 100 souls. But maybe that's a quest for your character, something they're actively doing during the campaign, and it can be rewarded later. So, go have fun cutting down monsters with your best friend, and I do mean that in the most literal way possible. Like I said near the beginning of the video, I love Soul Eater, and being able to work with this series again has been really fun. Doing all the research, putting it into D&D, it's just been fun. Even if the editing process took me a little bit longer than expected, I've been doing new stuff, keeping music in there, even if it is all just Persona 5 music. But yeah, I hope you guys are going to enjoy playing this as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, I'd like to also thank my Patreons, who you'll see their names scrolling across the screen now. And that will do it for our session today. I will see you guys next time, and as always, have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.